Just how automated the B-21 is remains unclear, but officials pushing to fly it with just one pilot points to a breakthrough operational capability. The Air Force is recommending a one-pilot standard for the Raider, the other cockpit seat becoming a weapon systems officer. And that choice strongly implies the B-21 already houses advanced automation and AI-infused autonomy that could one day make fully uncrewed operations realistic. The recommendation came from U.S. Air Force Global Strike Command, which is proposing the default crew for future B-21 Raiders be one pilot and one weapon systems officer, a WIZO, rather than the traditional pilot and co-pilot tandem. On its face, single pilot sorties for a strategic stealth bomber raise immediate safety questions. But consider what that recommendation signals. It points to a high level of automation and potentially AI agents functioning as virtual co-pilots being present in the design now. That kind of capability would be a genuinely groundbreaking operational feature, and it would square with the Air Force's frequent, if often cryptic, statements about how revolutionary the Raider is beneath its skin. Aviation Week first reported the AFGSC recommendation after a memo from Jen Thomas Boussier was circulated earlier this year. To date, the Air Force has received two pre-production B-21s at Edwards Air Force Base supporting development and test. The AFGSC memo argued that unleashing the Raiders' full potential demands a complex blend of skills, airmanship, weaponeering, electromagnetic spectrum operations, sensor management, real-time battle management, and agile replanning and combat. For this reason, the command recommended the crew be one pilot and one weapon systems officer. That language underscores a core point. The B-21 is far more than just a bomber. Beyond deep penetrating nuclear and conventional strike, the Raider is being built as an extensive networking, battle management, electronic warfare, and ISR node. It could even act as a forward aerial controller for uncrewed platforms. If the aircraft is designed from the outset to provide advanced automation, say an AI agent acting as a virtual co pilot that capability would not only reduce human workload, but could enable a pilot optional or pilotless mode in the future. The Air Force and North of Grumman have emphasized the Raiders' digital open mission system architecture. That backbone is intended to make it faster and easier to integrate new capabilities over time. The B-21 is already understood to be designed to at least provide the option of a pilot optional mode of operation in the future. Those autonomous and automated features would be a boon to any crew aboard the Raider, helping manage the aircraft's broad mission set. From an operational perspective, adding a WSO makes sense. The B-21's duties will extend well past classic bomber tasks. A dedicated systems operator focused on electromagnetic operations, sensor fusion, and battle management relieves the pilot to concentrate on airmanship and tactical flight demands. Training pilots to be equally proficient at this expanded mission set would be less than ideal, particularly if the aircraft is intended to serve as a forward node enabling other assets. That said, the physical reality of the B-21 cockpit is constraining. There is space for two people. Having one pilot on board raises questions about safety margins, especially during extreme endurance missions, sorties that will be common for long-range penetrators. The B-2 Spirit, by contrast, has two pilots and even a small cot for crew rest during long flights. The B-21 will likely have a similar, perhaps more permanent, sleep arrangement. Historically, bomber crews on the B-1 and B-52 include WSOs, but those aircraft still have larger crews overall and retain both a pilot and co-pilot. A key comparison is apt. Goussier's proposal mirrors tactical 2C philosophies like the F-15E, where WSOs are trained to fly the aircraft in emergencies while otherwise concentrating on mission systems. In those cases, the WSO can land the aircraft if needed. That concept transfers to the Raiders' two-seat layout. The WSO would likely be trained to fly in certain scenarios. But the Raider isn't an F-15E. It's far more modern and automated than that, and virtually anything in the Air Force's public inventory. Here is a central implication. 
AFGSC single pilot recommendation strongly hints the B-21 already features an extremely high degree of automation, possibly full autonomy in specific domains. Multiple companies and DARPA programs have been working on AI co-pilots for years. DARPA's AI alias program and Lockheed Martin's Matrix autonomy work, along with industry efforts from Shield AI, Merlin, and others, point to viable autonomy packages that reduce workload and increase safety margins. Shield AI's Hivemind and Merlin's work on tankers are examples of autonomy being integrated across crewed and uncrewed platforms. If the Raider contains an AI agent that functions as a virtual co-pilot, it would provide additional redundancy and safety, help reduce workload, and potentially offer tactical advice, whether to attack, jam, or avoid a threat along a carefully calculated flight path. There are concrete operational upsides to optionally piloted or uncrewed radar operations. If removing the human from the cockpit changes the risk calculus. Missions into heavily defended airspace become more palatable if losing the airframe doesn't equate to losing crew lives. Uncrewed operations could reduce strain on crews for non-combat movements and free up personnel for other tasks. That flexibility expands how commanders could employ the radar across a spectrum of missions. But the dream of fully uncrewed raiders is still aspirational. Even if technology permits pilotless sorties for certain mission types, sending a high-value asset loaded with sensitive, game-changing technologies into contested airspace uncrewed carries serious strategic and intelligence risks. Capture or downing of a B-21 without a crew inside still hands an adversary access to invaluable technology and secrets. Combat search and rescue CSAR, considerations while alleviated by uncrewed operations remain relevant in planning, not just for crew recovery, but because integrated strike packages require complex support. The B-2's Operation Midnight Hammer example shows how dozens of fighters, tankers, and supporting aircraft were required even when the B-2s actually delivered the munitions. Uncrewed operations won't eliminate the supporting ecosystem for penetrating strikes. Testing continues. The Air Force received a second flying pre-production B-21 in September, at least four more pre-production aircraft are being built, and ground test articles are active. Northrop Grumman had already received contracts for low-rate initial production. The Air Force's stated goal is to begin flying Raiders operationally by the end of the decade. The service expects at least 100 Raiders, five times the current B-2 fleet, and most officials now expect a larger final fleet size. Even 100 Raiders would be transformational for bomber operations. Technically integrating advanced automation into a long-range penetrating bomber is no small feat. The aircraft must fuse sensor data across many domains, conduct real-time battle management, manage electronic warfare suites, and maintain stealthy survivability against evolving integrated air defenses. An onboard AI co-pilot raw autonomy layer has to be resilient against cyber and electronic attack able to interpret complex tactical context and capable of making safety prioritized decisions under degraded conditions. It also has to play well within the digital open mission system to accept upgrades and new algorithms, something Northrop and the Air Force have baked into the design philosophy. From a doctrinal and ethical view, the idea of handing tactical decision aids, perhaps even recommended course of action suggestions to an AI onboarding nuclear capable bomber raises questions. The limits of machine authority and lethal decision-making remain hotly debated. For now, any autonomy on the B-21 would likely center on safety, navigation, sensor fusion, and tactical advisories rather than autonomous engagement decisions without human concurrence. So what does this mean in practical terms? If the B-21's automation includes capable AI co-pilots and robust autonomy, the Air Force gains significant operational flexibility, single pilot war sorties, pilotless logistics or repositioning flights, extended mission endurance with reduced crew fatigue, and more effective exploitation of the Raider as a forward battle management node. Opponents face a more distributed, networked, and resilient long-range strike capability that complicates their defensive planning. Conversely, if autonomy is overpromised or not sufficiently secure, the risks of mission failure or technology compromise increase. In short, the recommendation to crew raiders with one pilot and a WSO is a small window into a much larger picture. The Air Force is intentionally designing a long-range strike platform that marries stealth with digital, automated, and potentially autonomous capabilities. 
Whether that ultimately results in routine uncrewed B-21 operations is uncertain. For now, fully uncrewed sorties remain aspirational, but the path toward optionally piloted operations seems well paved by design choices made more than a decade ago. Testing and production are moving forward. The B-21's place inside the broader long-range strike family, which includes future weapons like the AGM-181 LRSO, means the Raider won't operate alone. It will be a node in a classified system of systems, extending reach and resilience for the joint force. Whenever the first operational Raiders arrive, expect to see crews of one pilot and one WSO, both heavily aided by the aircraft's own autonomous systems, at least to begin with. This is a turning point in long-range aviation. The technical decisions made while building the Raider, from open mission systems to optional pilotless modes, are signaling a deliberate shift in doctrine, longer reach, smarter platforms, and an increasing reliance on automation to do the things humans used to do alone. The question now is not whether the B-21 will change bomber operations, it's how quickly and in what ways the Air Force will let automation and autonomy shape the future battlefield. In the near term, expect the Raider to operate as a two-seat, highly automated platform. Over time, one can reasonably anticipate more pilot optional flights and eventually limited uncrewed operations, but always weighed against the unique risks of sending the nation's premier penetrating bomber into contested spaces without a human on board. That evolution will redefine risk tactics and the calculus of strategic strike.